Sitting our studios today for a closer look at Jasco's first half numbers is company chief executive Pete De Silva. Good to have you with us, sir, as always. I'm not too sure if you're very happy about being here today because, sure, it hasn't been uh, quite a very interesting period for you. Uh, yeah. You've seen losses significantly mm. across the board. How challenging is the environment from a local perspective, Pete? Not good to be here, but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been a very tough six months. Uh, even more so because we had our big restructure up until the end of the last year, which is in June. And I was ready to fire on all cylinders from July, which is the beginning of our fiscal year. And we started off with four weeks of strikes. Mm. So it was, uh, you know, it's the third year I'm at JASCO, and it's the third a strike I've experienced. Two in the metal industries and one famous one in the platinum belt. So it's been hard on us. Uh, I still think the, 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 the good fundamentals are there. The changes have all been made, but we need a bit of luck on our sides. So we need the next six months to catch up. We lost the revenue. If you look at our numbers, everything is delayed. You know, is re uh, you can relate to the strike. So we had a loss of, uh, not a loss, or a downturn of about 4.8 million in PBIT compared to the last period. And it's 100% volume related to the strike. Mm. But it's just, just too short a period to catch up because the strike is in July. It impacts half of August because supplies can't come in. You can't get raw material. And then December, you've got half a month. So you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. But we have to catch up in H2, and that's our plan. Don't forget about ESCOM. I'll ask you how you're going to catch mm. up in H2 uh, in a moment or two. But also shareholders have been quite hard on you over the last couple of uh, years uh, since you've taken up this yeah. position, uh, demanding and obviously expecting some kind of solid returns and a direction with the company. Is this the beginning of the turn in the tide? Yes, and uh, that's right. I welcome the shareholders and, and the board to be question and question where we're going and that. But our plans are fundamentally are okay. They're solid. They're there to be there. We just need a bit of luck. We need a bit of stability. And we could have blue-collar stability in, in the next 24 months. That would f be fantastic for the business. Mm -hmm. Even though I've always said, even when I came on three years ago, we are diversifying from uh, manufacturing. You know, when I came on board, 50% of our volume was around about manufacturing. Mm. It's down to 25%. And I expect to lower that and rather go into integration and manage services. That's where the business has to go. Tell us about MTech. I understand it's no longer an asset which is being held for sale. If you can elaborate on that yeah. particular transaction. I think that's our uh, chartered accountant speak. It's, it's really a, a requirement that if you ring fence the business for sale, you've literally got 24 months to conclude that transaction. Mm. If you don't conclude that transaction, you have to report back on the numbers. So, and that's what we had to do. The negotiations are still ongoing. You may recall the last time we had a big management change in Korea, which was our partners, and that delayed the process by nine months. So unfortunately, we could not conclude the, the, the deal within two years. So we have to report on the, on the figures again, and we'll do so until we exit the business. But it's strategically, it's still our intent, intention to, to exit that business. At whatever cost? Or no, 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 not at all. You know, I'm not saying I think it's lumpy at the moment, you know, with Eskom power failures and, and or load shedding. Mm. They've got other things on their mind. They are one of our biggest customers or the biggest uptake of, of our product. So that's always an issue. But I've always said I need cable in my business. I don't necessarily have to twist the cable. So I'd rather have a partnership where somebody takes over the factory and that's good at that. And I have an off-take, a strategic off-take agreement and use that product in my solutions. As simple as that. What about looking at other partners? Uh, we've recently seen the likes of EOH concluding a, a sale just uh, as we speak mm. at the moment, uh, the announcement coming through. Wouldn't it make sense if you find a bigger player in the industry that can hold your hand and guide you along? At the moment, our work is not complete. You know, I think it would be premature. The value is there. You know, we've seen a lot of activity in the market in, in the last couple of hours, actually. Mm. So I think there's still work to be done and there's time to be taken in the market to see where we go. We are going to be acquisitive. We've just raised a bond. You may have known that last month we listed a bond of uh, a program of 750 million rand. The reception to that? Very good. We did the first issuance of 100 million at a good rate. So it shows you there's an appetite in the market. And uh, we've only done 100 million and we've used that to settle the preference shares from Afrocentric, mm -hmm. which was a big historical issue. And we've got room now to grow as we need the money. You know, at the moment, our market cap doesn't allow us to go to the 750 million, but it's there. It's listed, it's there, it's ready for the taking, and they're starting to look at some, there's some appetite in the market for that. The terms and conditions of that bond, though, uh, are they uh, fairly stringent? Well, it's a three-year program, and it's, it's at prime, roundabout prime, which I think is very good, taking where we are in the market at this point in time.
Pete, thank you so much for your time today. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for, but we certainly do wish you all the best in your endeavors.